Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today we are in Muscle City and I'll be taking you guys through an entire leg day. Um, we're dieting now. We're four weeks away from going to Thailand and today it's a bit of a deload week. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to take you guys with me. Kind of explain what a deload is and be able to talk through movements a little bit more because when I'm training legs, I really struggle to speak and train at the same time. All right, so we're just gonna take some pre-workout. I should have taken it in the car, but I didn't want to spill all the powder in the Supra. Also, I don't typically dry scoop, but I lost my shaker cup. So we will have to dry scoop today. Now I'm using the pump pre-workout, but my protein, strawberry sherbet flavor. So this is non-caffeinated. I've been trying to reduce my caffeine intake just because it really messes up with my sleep, which then messes up with my recovery and I already struggle to sleep. And I probably sleep like five hours a night, which is not ideal. But with the nature of the business growing and scaling, we're just doing a lot of work there. And this usually tastes a lot better when you do mix it with water. Otherwise, the flavor is a little bit too concentrated. Before training, I usually like to spend maybe 15 to 20 minutes warming up, especially when it comes to lower body days, because I do have a lot of lower back issues due to previous lifts. I probably have powder all over my mouth. <laughs> Lance is giggling like, yeah, he <laughs> snorted cocaine. <laughs> But I'm gonna take you guys through uh, just a warm-up session, put some B-roll footage up, explain to you why we're doing certain movements, and then get straight into legs. Cool. All right, so we're gonna start up with, you know, around 10 minutes of foam rolling, really loosening up the lower back area, the hips, the hamstrings, the quads. Um, super, super tight, especially because I've been sitting down on a chair all day. I've been awake since five in the morning, did 30 minutes of fasted cardio. And I have, other than that, I haven't really had much movement. As you can see, I'm quite stiff. With this, a lot of people like to roll, but actually the best way to do it is just kind of sit here and let the pressure apply to the tight muscle groups and like let it slowly release. As you're doing this, relax your body to loosen it up. All right, cool. So now we just finished foam rolling. There's, I don't have a specific routine around it. I do it until my hips feel better, my hamstrings feel better, my quads feel better. From there, we will do some planks. So three sets, 60 seconds each just to practice bracing in preparation for hack squats, even things like leg extensions, especially when it comes to like hamstring based movements, you know, stiff legs, Romanian deadlifts, it's really good to practice bracing. A lot of people, when they lift, they often have their pelvis kind of tucked out and that's gonna cause a lot of lower back injury. So you always wanna tuck it forward and focus on crunching your stomach in. So it's really beneficial to do a few sets of abs in the beginning. As you can see, I was kind of shaking a little bit because I skipped core for a long time. When I was younger, I used to do a lot of sit-ups. So my external core, my external abdomen looks great, but internally it's quite weak. So my bracing is not the best, which causes a lot of lower back issues. And again, that's just because I was lifting really poorly growing up, you know, squatting like three plates when I was like 19 for 20 reps, it was disgusting. So trying to undo all the damages now and doing a lot of injury prevention, making sure that we're warming up correctly, cueing correctly. Now we're gonna move on to some hanging leg extensions. Well, before we do that, another thing, a quick tip, when you are doing planks, be intentional about it. Don't just sit there, like really focus on engaging and flexing your core the entire time. But we're gonna do some leg raises, three sets, anywhere between 12 to 20 reps. We're now moving on to hanging knee raises. Again, be very intentional with it. Hang, brace, lift. Oh. 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 And then we'll do a 30 second rest. I just watched back the video. I was swinging so much, <laughs> which is not good. Always good to record your footage and play it back. If hanging leg raises are too difficult, you can always start with hanging knee raises, which is pretty much the same path of motion, just a little bit easier. So it looks something like this. Oh. Now we'll move on to leg extensions. First exercise of the day. We have leg extensions, three sets. Because it is an active deload week, we're performing the same sets, same reps, but our weight load is gonna drop by 30%. Now the reason for this is because, firstly I'm dieting, we've been training quite vigorously the last couple of weeks. I've noticed that although my CNS is pretty good, I'm not too fatigued. Physically, I'm unable to lift and progress. So it's best to, you know, take a step back. That way we can take two steps forward, pull some fatigue out and go back hard next week. Now again, we're four weeks out, four weeks out to Bali, like we're gonna fly out. It's not like a competition or anything. I'm just trying to diet down as much as I can. We've dropped two to three kilos so far, a little bit aggressive, and in four weeks, five weeks, our goal is to lose another kilo per week. So it's gonna be challenging. Currently eating 2,300 calories. 
Enough of that, we're gonna do some warm-up sets, prime the joints, pre-engage the quads, and then go from there. So I like to start off with some partials just to get some blood flowing. Take some time to get the body warmed up. The key to growth and crazy results is by consistently doing this for a long time. And if you're injured, you'll have to take breaks, your growth will be disrupted. So it's very important to look after your joints and just your overall health. So first set, really focusing on the negative, engaging as many fibers as possible and focusing on the contraction quality at the peak of the movement. Pausing at the bottom to kill momentum, flexing at the top. So although the weight is really light, we're trying to make it as heavy as possible. And it just burns. And that's like four reps in reserve. Good intensity for deload. So a very common mistake people do as well is when they hop on the machine, they leave the setting as is. Everybody's height is different, so always adjust it based on your height and based on your configuration. Someone might be taller, someone might be shorter, someone's legs might be longer, someone's legs might be shorter. I also find that when you're a little bit more far forward, you get a lot more teardrop recruitment, but when you're a little bit further back with that additional stretch, you get a lot more on the upper thigh, especially if you go like this. Although that's not a conventional method of leg extensions, I do like to throw it in every now and then when I'm going to absolute failure or even beyond failure. I like to have measurable controlled variables, but sometimes for the sake of fun, I'll just like swing things around. Last set, so we're just pretty much chilling today. Nothing too crazy, really focusing on recruitment quality. So we're gonna do really only nine, nine reps. So that's one. Really focusing on the negative. As you can see, the fibers really rippling too. I don't know if you can see that lens, can you see it? So right now we're literally only using the quads. Also, the way your knees are pointed does make a difference. Uh, easy. For this, I like to go quite narrow because it's quad dominant, toes pointed forward. And then another thing people do wrong, right? Do that from here, they just go like that. I'm like, bro, my back. So what you would do is find your stance, bend your knees, tuck yourself into the padding, tuck your pelvis forward, flex your glutes, and then brace your core. Now, you have no lower back loading, and you can just drive with your heel. All right, so we're gonna do first set, back off set, eight reps, and then we're gonna drop the load. It's not too heavy. Drop by 30%. Even though the weight goes lighter, man, it still feels so heavy. You know that middle point where you're like, not bulking, but you're not cutting, and you're in the transitional phase? You think it's the best? I hate that phase. Oh. See, I'm like, I'm not as full, but I'm not shredded, so I look skinny. <laughs> we are now on exercise number three. We have two or three sets of incline leg press, narrow stance, today is very quad dominant. But this is a great movement for developing the teardrops. It's kind of like, the teardrop is like the forearm of the arm, right? So you get the bicep, and then when you wear oversized t-shirts, you just see this. So we're gonna do two sets, load up maybe three plates, nice and light, 15 reps. All right, so for this one, it's quad bias, so I like to put my feet a little bit lower. Um, me and Lance were just saying that this actually feels a lot better than a hammer strength due to the adjustability of the bench. However, the height of the platform is in our best, especially if you're trying to hit the teardrops, because I want to go into lower, but as you can see, my feet will slip. So I'm just kind of trying to go as low as possible. Again, a lot of people, they don't cue the movements correctly, so what I like to do, I grab the handles, tuck my scapula back, and really lock in place. And I usually almost have my toes up, elevated. Press with the heels, unlock, grab the handles. Again, retract, push your ass into the bench, flex your quads, make sure it's engaged before you go down. And brace. Stop around here, up. So you don't want to go low to the point that your ass is off the bench and your spine is starting to curve at the bottom. And I also like to take it really slow. Three, two, four second eccentrics. One second pause at the bottom, kill the momentum. Drive here, flex as much as possible. As you can see, my quad's shaking. And pressure on the heel, pause, drive. <laughs> so that was just a demo set, just to kind of show you guys the queuing methods. I hope that helps. Okay, so we are on exercise number four, I think. Quick hack, so we have the hyper extensions. A lot of people do this wrong. What I like to do, I like to grab a plate because I'm short, I'm five foot midget. Shout out to the short kings. Place it here, usually I would have like another plate there to kind of create a little bit more distance. But with this, I want you to separate it into two different movements. Go as far for forward as possible, 
and you're doing a stiff leg combined with a hip thrust. So by that I mean, again, brace the core so you're not loading your back. Drive forward, kind of like a stiff leg, pushing your ass back, right? We're kind of driving forward. Now you get a full stretch in the hamstring, and I want you to drive up, pushing your pelvis into the padding, kind of like a hip thrust. So, boom. Flexing your hamstrings, your glutes at the top. Do it again, nice and slow. Push your glutes back, torso forward, get that stretch. That's a wrap. Two. Dude, I feel like every fucking fitness influencer from like the 2000s. <laughs> and push. <laughs> yeah, bring it back, dude. It's a pretty good movement, and it really helps you develop the connectivity with your hamstrings and your glutes. It took me a while to learn this, and it is a bit of a struggle for a lot of people, but once you break down the movements and really focus on recruiting certain fibers, you'll be able to get a lot more bang for your buck on every rep. It's like that, I'm doing body weight. It already burns. Training with like, you know, Seabum, Jeff Side, John Skywalker and all them, these are the people I used to look up to, and now like having the opportunity to like be with them, it's crazy. And like seeing how everybody trains differently, what their priorities are, their eating habits, their sleeping habits. Like what Zach learned from C-Bomb and then he's teaching me this. I'm like, whoa, that's, that's crazy, you know? It's insane, man. Here's the thing, like we'll see C-Bomb and all of them, they'll lift like 50 kilo dumbbells on incline dumbbell press, right? And then I was out here maybe one or two years ago doing the same thing. Yeah. And I'm like, how the fuck am I doing the same weight as him? Like I must be doing something wrong, you know? Less and more, and quality is always better than quantity of weight, quantity of reps. There's no point if I'm like, you know. I think the longevity as well. Oh, dude, that's that's one of the biggest things I've learned. It's like, how long can you do this for, right? Yeah. All these variables are so important. Like to keep growing, you need to be doing it for a long, long time. Natural, enhanced, even when you're enhanced, it's not as quick as you think. Yeah, so I have toes pointed out most of the time, so you'll see. The first thing I like to do, neutralize the spine by driving the hip in. As you can see, glutes flex, and it lifts up the weight. And then from here, toes out, and there we go. It's engaged, try forward, nice and slow. One. Pause, two. Good. <clears throat> <clears throat> Lance just pointed out a time between sets and I do it so subconsciously I forgot. People always complain to me, especially all my clients, I cannot be bothered to track my lifts in between sets. Like, dude, you gotta get it done, man. And you do it often enough that you actually forget. Like, I forgot I was timing my stuff. I'm very particular with rest time. I try to keep the environment the same, keep the variables the same. That way we can create measurable progression. It simplifies training. It sounds like it overcomplicates training, but I'm sure Lance can agree that it actually simplifies the training, right? Yeah, it does. It makes it subconscious. So we'll do one more set just to wrap things up and then we'll do calves. So one of my biggest pet peeves when people lift and I see videos like, yes, it's a machine and yes, the weight is distributed evenly. But when you have a 20 and then you have a 10 here, I don't know, it just doesn't sit with me right. So just don't be a lazy fuck and grab the same plate. So this is probably my favorite calf exercise. Take your time with it. Don't rush it. Stay with it. Flex. Uh. Pause, squeeze. Cool. So just wrapped it up, finished off legs. Again, today was a bit of a deload. Thought that was a great opportunity to kind of run you guys through a session where I can actually speak. Shout out to Lance for being behind the camera. He's on TikTok too now. Um, I'll leave his link in the description. So shout out to my protein for hooking us up with today's pre-workout. If you guys want to cop one, hit the link in the bio. You save anywhere between 30 to 50% off. Great product non-caffeinated, helps you sleep better. If you guys have any questions, always shoot me a message on Instagram. And if you want to take your physique to the next level, apply for coaching.